Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be finding the real and imaginary parts to this complex number. This problem can be found in your free online complex analysis textbook. I'll leave a link in the description below. So how do we find the real and imaginary parts to this number? So according to PEMDAS, we should first figure out this exponent here. How do we cube a complex number? Well, let's figure out what that means. Now, multiplying three different complex numbers at the same time is incredibly difficult because that involves some multi-layered foiling. It's, it's kind of crazy. So let's work one at a time, one multiplication at a time, I should say. So let's start by working out this first multiplication here. Let's multiply these two complex numbers together. The way we do that is we multiply across fractions. So the denominator, the bottom of this fraction, is going to be 2 times 2, which is 4. The numerator, however, is going to be a little bit trickier to figure out because we have to multiply these two complex numbers. And multiplying these two complex numbers means you have to FOIL. Negative 1 times negative 1, which is positive 1. And then negative 1 times the square root of 3 times i is just negative square root of 3 times i. Or I can just change the sign to subtraction. Square root of 3 times i times negative 1 is negative square root of 3i. And then the square root of 3 times i times the square root of 3 times i is the square root of 3 times i all squared, which we'll figure out in a moment. And so we don't have, we, and so we can't forget that we have this other factor here that we still have to multiply out. We'll get to that way later though. Let's figure out this other fraction here that looks kind of messy and let's simplify it a little bit. So in the numerator, I want to first combine like terms. So I want to figure out what are my real numbers in this numerator? Well, I have a, a real part here and technically there's a real part there and I want to explain why. The square root of 3 times i all squared is just 3 times i squared. Because the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is 3. i times i is i squared. So this is just so this is just 3 i squared, which is negative 3. And so I have 1 and a negative 3, which means in total my real part is negative 2. And what about my imaginary part? Well, I have a negative square root of 3i and another negative square root of 3i. And so I have two of them. Two square root of 3i's. Now, I want to emphasize this i is not inside the square root. That would be very bad. Now, you'll, you might have noticed that in the original problem, i is written before the square root of 3 at the top here. And a lot of authors will do that. I personally like to put my i at the very end, and that's just because I'm more into the habit of writing the basis vectors at the end, but you don't need to worry about that. You can do it however you want. It's the same thing because the commutative property of multiplication says you can multiply these three numbers here in whatever order you want. And so right here is my imaginary part to the numerator, and the denominator is still four. Don't forget, we still have this other factor that we still have to figure out at some point. So now I can multiply these two fractions the same way I multiplied the first two fractions, and I'm just going to multiply across. And that is gonna, that's going to involve some foiling. It's going to look a little nasty, but we can get through this. So in the numerator, negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2. Negative 2 times the square root of 3i is minus 2 square root of 3 times i. Switch the addition symbol to a subtraction symbol to take care of that negative. Negative 2 square root of 3 times i times negative 1 is positive 2 square root of 3 times i. And lastly, negative 2 times the square root of 3i times the square root of 3i is negative 2 times 3 times i squared all divided by 4 times 2, which is 8. We're almost done. I can see a lot of things are going to clean up very nicely here. So 2 times the square root of 3i, negative 2 times the square root of 3i, they cancel out. i squared is just negative 1. So I can just flip this sign to be an addition symbol and get rid of that i squared there. And so this is just 2 plus 6 over 8, which is 1. Now, we found the answer. 
well, almost, I should say that the real part is one, but the imaginary part is zero. So those are your real and imaginary parts. That's the answer to this question. But I wanna mention one more thing that's really important here because the answer to this question says a lot more than just the answer. We just cubed a number, I just wanna clarify. We cubed a number, a complex number here. We cubed it and we got a result of one. What does this mean? This means that the cubed root of one is negative one plus the square root of three times i all over two, which is not the same thing as one. So there is another cubed root of one. See, this is the interesting thing about complex numbers. So in the realm of the complex numbers, there are more cube roots of one. The cube root of one is not just one. That's not the only solution to that equation. There are more. And we'll get to a generalization of this once we get to the fundamental theorem of algebra, which says that all of these polynomials in general have their solutions in the complex numbers. So we'll get to that when we get there. Thanks everyone, and I'll see you in the next video.